So uh, speaking about BOVA, it's a big topic. I finished my physiotherapy degree in 2016. Uh, and the BOVAT concept has been the gold standard or the best basic kit for every physical therapist, occupational therapist. And there is always discussion around the BOVAT concept. It is BOVAT, it is not, it is the evidence and so on. Uh, but here we have the privilege of being with a person who met uh, and trained with the BOVATs. So um, I want to ask you, what were the BOVATs like? What impression do you have of them? <laughs> First of all, Mrs. Bobath was a very strict and goal-directed woman. She was warm in her heart, but she put everything about how to make the client better and her beliefs came in front. She was very strict. And her husband was someone who believed in her desperately, loved her and believed in her desperately and spent his whole life trying to figure out why clients got better when she did whatever handling she did, mm -hmm. why the client improved. And so he spends a lot of time in the library and he spends a lot of time trying to justify mm -hmm. what he did. We can say that uh, Mr. Bobat is the theoretical part of the Bobat and the uh, Berta, the practical, the, the creativity. We can say that? Yes. Okay. Bertie was... Bertie was the creative one. She could feel intuitively what needed to happen next. She knew how to create situations that made the client feel safe and would allow themselves to attempt to move, mm -hmm. to do what she asked them to do mm -hmm. with her hands and with her voice. Okay. Um, what was the Bobat concept like at the beginning when you started to, to train? Because the Bobat concept is obviously a, um, a concept, not a method. Uh, so it has uh, evolution. So how was the, the Bobat concept at that, at that point? When you do the course Mrs. in Switzerland? Mrs. Bobath, Mrs. Bobath didn't thought of it as a philosophy. Hmm. She thought of this as a philosophy. What does that mean? She believed that recovery could occur and we had to create situations for that to happen. She believed in recovery, but she believed that it as a basic philosophy on which we would then create handling strategies. And okay. what she always said to us and what I took away from the very beginning was, that as the scientists were going to figure out what happens in the brain and we were going to keep learning more over the years. And every time the scientists figure out more about what we now call recovery, mm -hmm. okay, what we call plasticity, we were supposed to, as therapists, make up handling strategies, create handling strategies mm -hmm. that use the new information that for her, bow bath which he hated mm -hmm. that whole idea of calling it a name was not a cookbook with a bunch of exercises in it whatever she was doing today she was sure that in three years with new science should be changed and it could keep developing i think her followers Mm -hmm. <laughs> became very rigid became very rigid rigid mm -hmm. and one of the reasons she didn't even want to write a book which she never really wanted to write mm. was because exactly happened what she predicted would happen in mm -hmm. a course somebody would say read page 35 and 36 or 38 and tomorrow in the class we'll discuss it and practice the strategy for mm -hmm. Mrs. Bobath, that was like poison. That was yeah. not what she had in mind. In fact, she allowed herself to change constantly. Yeah. And I, I'm going to tell a little story about her. Okay. For a long time, she used quadruped and then two-point kneeling, being on your knees, mm -hmm. as part of a process, like when baby development, to mm. work yourself up to being in standing. So I took one course, the basic course, and that was in that course as something we practiced and discussed. And then about two 
advanced courses later. Mm -hmm. She stands up in front of the class and she says, I'm not doing quadruped or two point kneeling anymore. Oh, I'm going straight to standing. I Mm -hmm. don't, we don't need to do that. And one of the things about Mrs. Bobath was she didn't tell you why she made that choice. She Mm -hmm. didn't tell you what was behind it. She just said it. And there I am sitting in the class, young, 50 (laughs) years younger than now, for example, or 45 years younger than now. And I thought to myself, like a young person does, hmm, that's because she's just so good at handling. I guess I'll still need to do that till I get better. Mm. It took a long time for us and me to figure out why she didn't want to do it anymore. Like, because your foot isn't the surface that needs to be on the floor. It doesn't okay. have the skin receptors that activate muscle. Uh, the hip is then too far behind the knee when you're in two-point kneeling. It mm-hmm. doesn't prepare the hip or knee for standing two joint muscles. But she never would say any of that. She just chose not to do it anymore. Mm-hmm. And she left us to figure out why. She was a very interesting woman. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is the most uh, valuable thing that you rescue from that time, uh, that uh, conversation with the Boba, that courses? Uh, could you put into, uh, into practice in your work? Um, as I said, that first Bobath course made me into a therapist who believed in therapy and believed in the possibility of recovery. What I took from that course was my responsibility mm-hmm. to create handling strategies that solve the movement dysfunction problem of the client, that I was given the right to make up, I was given the responsibility to make up those strategies and that the reference point, the reference point was supposed to be what we call then normal movement, not adapted movement like we learned in school, a client with the stroke walks or somebody with Mm -hmm. Parkinson's, how they walk and your teacher described it and showed you how they did it. That wasn't the reference. The reference was supposed to be return to more normal, optimal movement strategies. And that my handling had to reflect attempting to get to that point. That's Mm -hmm. what I took from Mrs. Bobath. It was like being free. I was free of my notes from school. I was free of everything. I was free to think and make create handling strategies. That's what she gave me. 